So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. We're in this blessed season of Advent, a season of preparation and waiting. And again, you may recall, but it was news to me when I was in my early 20s, that the church really breaks Advent in two pieces. And that the first part of Advent, up through December 17th, is actually a time where we don't really talk or think at, about Christmas at all. It's a preparation time, not for the first coming of Christ at Christmas, but a time where we focus and ask ourselves and take some time to prepare for the second coming of Christ, when, the, uh, when, when time will come to an end and the great drama of this life and this earth will come to a close and we will all uh, be brought before the Son of Man for our day of judgment. And so it's an opportunity to prepare in a really intense way and in a special way for the second coming of Christ. The second half of Advent or the final week of Advent is a time where we do prepare our hearts in a special way to make sure that we are ready to celebrate with full joy and so forth, the, second, the first coming of Christ to Christmas. And so we enter into the season of waiting and preparation. It's why a lot of parishes have Advent penance services, an opportunity to, am I ready for the second coming of Christ? Am I prepared and have I um, examined myself and make sure that I am ready for the return of the King? And so we enter into the season of waiting again and anticipation. And I think, if, if obviously, if we look around our culture, we live in a culture that despises waiting, right? We, and in fact, our, our, our world is giving us, in our country or our culture in a particular way, uh, it seems to be constantly working to give us what we want as quickly as humanly possible, right? We, so we don't have to wait for food anymore, we can go to fast food. And we don't have to wait for three-day shipping because we can do two-day shipping. And then apparently now you can even do order it and then a drone ships it to you the next hour. Uh, so it just keeps getting more and more whatever we want, when we want it, as soon as we want it, so that there is no waiting. Right? Netflix and all the entertainment that's brought to us with the click of a, of a button or tapping our phone. All these things delivering us what we want as quickly as, as we possibly can get it. And so again, we, we come from a, a culture and a circumstance that despises waiting for things. And um, in that, I think we, we have something that's very harmful for us spiritually. So when we hear the church inviting us into the season of waiting and preparation, uh, we can see that and, and experience that as a very oppressive invitation by the church. You know, a very... Um, a very difficult thing, like the church is adding a burden onto us and telling us, don't have any fun, you have to wait, you have to prepare yourself and, and, and enter into this season and all these things. We can, again, everyone else is telling us, get whatever you want, whenever you want it, as quickly as you possibly can. And St. Paul was addressing that mentality in the second reading, where he talks about putting away all of the sort of ways in which we feed ourselves, even sinfully, getting whatever we want, whenever we want it. But I came across a beautiful quote this week that really, for me, helped me kind of reframe what it means to wait. Because I, I, I like you, I struggle with waiting. Pope Benedict XVI, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, once said something about waiting that I thought was, that struck me very profoundly. He said this, a person is alive as long as they wait, as long as hope is alive in their heart. He's saying that, in fact, what waiting does is remind us that we are alive, that it is life-giving to wait for something. And I thought that's very profound. But also, it, as I reflected on that and prayed about that this week, I also recognize that it's very true, right? Because when we're waiting for something, it is one of those things where we have to ask ourselves, now, why am I waiting? And then the answer, in this particular case, uh, in, in a real way, is that there's something coming that hasn't happened yet. There's something out there that is coming at us that is not that it hasn't come to fruition yet. There's something worth waiting for. 
And that, that seems very strange that waiting makes us more alive. Again, we, if you talk to a lot of people, it sounds like waiting is like the most horrible thing that's ever happened. If you ask some people, Americans, what's the worst thing that happened to you this year? They might tell you waiting for AT&T help service for 40 minutes, you know, or waiting for something to get fixed or whatever it might be. But waiting, I think, as Pope, as Pope Benedict is pointing out, I think I recognize that to be true. As soon as I, as soon as I read those words, I was like, yes, that, that is, that's what we need to realize and cling to. That waiting enlivens me. In sitting still and not just doing all the time what I want as quickly as I can get it and doing it for me and making it about me and, and having my needs met, but sitting still and taking time to sit and just wait and prepare. It does enliven us. And I, I think a way that we recognize that is, think of those times I've been there, you probably have been there too, where you go through a stretch of time, maybe it was a vacation, nothing against vacations, right? But maybe it, there, there's, that, there's those times in our lives where we've had everything we wanted, kind of as, as, as rapidly as we could possibly get. Everything was sort of going our way, maybe. And, and in any ways, we were sort of in that, where we weren't waiting for anything. Everything was coming at us. We were getting all the things that we needed, all of our needs met for an extended period of time. And I don't know about you, but I know for myself, when I've been in that, for any length of time at all, it's very deadening. It's not very, it very quickly becomes sort of numbing when we have everything that we want all the time, when you watch, uh, you know, 20 straight hours of a TV show, right? Or you get everything that you need and there is no, no sense of, of anything sort of encumbering us or getting in our way. Whatever that might look like for you. I know that when I've been there, for me, it's been very boring very quickly. Very deadening. Whereas those moments in time where I've had to wait for something. I'm just thinking about just this past Wednesday. I love Thanksgiving. And so Wednesday night, I was waiting for Thanksgiving, and I was jacked up. I was excited. I was going to see my family the next day. And it was almost a kind of a letdown when Thanksgiving finally arrived. I'm like, and it happened, and it was great, and it's awesome, and I'm so thankful for it. But it was like, it was almost more fun waiting. It was, it was an enlivening thing. It was an exciting thing to sit still and sort of wait for something that hadn't happened yet. And so I think this invitation to Advent, to sitting still, to doing what Christ says in the gospel, to prepare ourselves for an hour we do not expect the Son of Man will come, to sit with that, to prepare ourselves, to spend some time waiting, is not a burden that the church is putting upon us or that Christ is putting upon us. I think it's an invitation to joy, an invitation to enlivening ourselves to becoming awake and awakening to what is real and what is coming and what hasn't happened yet. And so as we enter into this season, I pray that we do so with a spirit of waiting and preparation and stillness, but not that we see it as a burden, but that it, we recognize it for the gift that it is, for an opportunity to awaken, to sit in stillness, and to realize that Christ has come once in Bethlehem, but that he will come again at the end of time to invite all of us to our eternal reward.